Hello, good morning everyone. Good morning ma'am. Good morning classmate. So we are the group one. We are going to discuss about the enhancing social fabric malasakit today. Enhancing the social fabric malasakit. A basic requirement for inclusive development is that our peoples are proud of being Filipino and that they fully trust their government. Hence, it will need malasakit at both ends from government and from the citizen. By 2022, there will be greater trust between the people and government. At the same time, key reforms to the justice system will be done to reduce delays and costs to those who seek justice at all levels, community, barangay, police, fiscal, prosecution, and the courts. Cultural awareness and valuing our diversity will be promoted as a first step to ultimately regain our spirit of nationalism and pride. Curing people-centered, clean and efficient governance. Public perception of the Philippine government will continuously improve as it works to become cleaner, more efficient, effective and people-centered. By 2022, the country will improve its rankings in global governance indices such as worldwide governance indicators, corruption perception index, global competitiveness index, and open budget index. Ensuring people-centered, clean and efficient governance strategies to reduce corruption. The Office of the Ombudsman is the main anti-corruption body in the Philippines, with the mandate to investigate and prosecute corruption cases. It prosecutes officials who are allegedly involved in the acts of graps and corruption. The program DAP project, Kasanga Action Contra Corruption, signed by PACC and representatives from 49 government agencies, creates Anti-Corruption Coordinating Councils, or ACCC, within offices and one at a national level chaired by the Chief Executive. The PACC shall, on behalf of the President, ensure accountability of public officers and take effective measures against graft and corruption in the public sector, achieved through the proper observance of due process in the administration of justice. There is 8888 Citizen Center or CCC that accepts complaints of grievances through text messages. The 8888 CCC receives complaints and grievances from the public and in turn endorses this to relevant government department or agencies for immediate action. We can all help prevent public sector corruption and make sure public funds are spent as intended by providing posters, videos, and banners designed to help raise awareness of public sector corruption risk and encourage supporting in our community or workplace. Information materials designed to help public sector employees identify, report, and prevent corruption, including presentations from leading experts in the field of corruption prevention. Make a complaint or providing information helps to identify and expose public sector corruption in misconduct. Information provided in complaints also help in identifying broadened trends and patterns in corruption issues and risk. To achieve seamless service delivery, there are three main strategies that governments are taking to achieve this vision of seamless service delivery. Committing to fully digital and touchless services. Designing proactive services around life events. Building the infrastructure to support such seamless services. The main strategies to improve seamless delivery were found to be increasing citizen participation in the affairs of the local authority and partnership with the community in service delivery. Flexible response to service user complaints, offering value for money and ensuring that service users pay their bills on time. 
to enhance administrative governance. Studies have shown that the existing governmental organization is bloated and overstuffed with redundant offices and overlapping or fragmented or ambiguous functions. The situation calls for right-sizing of the bureaucracy to promote effectiveness, efficiency, and economy in the delivery of services to the people. Streamlining the operations of departments or agencies is needed to achieve the government's goal of maintaining a well-functioning system of governance. There is a need to rationalize the existing machinery, reconfigure the organization, contain costs and expenditures, and streamline operations in order to fulfill the constitutional mandate of civil service and maximize the role of the public sector in national development. House Bill No. 5707 was filled in 17th Congress to improve public service delivery and maximize, if not totally eliminate, redundancies, overlaps, and duplication in government operation, as well as to simplify rules and regulation systems and procedures. To fully engage and empower citizenry, governments are changing, adopting, and evolving just like the world around us. And while the challenges are real, so are the opportunities. Addressing the challenges governments are facing can be tied back to three core ideas. Number one, engage and connect with citizen. Citizen engagement is core to every government's mission. Today, citizens want to have access to government services 24-7 on their term and when convenient to them. Number two, modernize the government workplace. Government must provide their employees with the tools they need to do their jobs as efficiently and as securely as possible. This is where governments can address things like labor and reskilling gaps and promote safety and security. Number three, enhance government services. Governments are constantly under pressure to become more efficient, which means finding ways to optimize their operations and transform their processes. It's here that governments can connect those siloed legacy systems and utilize innovative applications such as artificial intelligence, the internet, and machine learning. These ideas make up the heart of digital transformation of government. Improving electoral systems with new international quality management guidance. The technical specification ISO TS 54001 quality management systems, particularly requirements for the application of ISO 9001. 2015 for electoral organizations at all levels of government creates the framework for a quality management system that helps electoral bodies provide more reliable and transparent electoral services. Pursuing swift and fair administration of justice. Providing justice is a crucial element in enhancing the social fabric. It serves as a deterrent to those intending to violate the law, provides recompense and closure to the victims of those who violate the law, and gives a chance to those convicted of violating the law to face the consequence of their action and redeem themselves in society. Providing justice is the law of government. Therefore, the administration of justice must be swift and fair so that people trust government. In pursuance of swift and fair administration of justice, the PDP 2017-2022 outlined the strategies aimed at enhancing the country's civil, criminal, and commercial and administrative justice system and improving efficiency and accountability of the justice sector.
Under the Philippine Development Plan or PDP, the traditional institutions-based method of justice administration will be shifted to a more sector-based approach. It highlights coordination among the justice sector, institutions, agencies, and actors to ensure a swift and fair administration of justice. This heroic ship will deliver justice in a way that is responsive to the demands of its constituents. By 2022, the country's civil, criminal, commercial, and administrative justice system will be enhanced. Significant reforms will be undertaken to ensure fair and swift administration of justice. Consequently, the country's ranking in the World Governments Indicator, or WGI, rule of law will improve to be in the upper half. The World Justice Project, or WJP, Fundamental Rights and Criminal Justice Indicator to the upper 25 percentile, and WJP Civil Justice Indicator to the upper 20 percentile. The strategies of pursuing swift and fair administration of justice, enhancing systems and rationalizing interdependence among justice sector, institutions, or actors are essential developmental approaches to provide a timely deliver of justice. There will be harmonized efforts and seamless coordination among the different actors involved in civil, criminal, commercial, and administrative justice. Strategies to implement this are as follows. To enhance civil, criminal, commercial, and administrative justice system. Institutionalize the Justice Sector Coordinating Council, or JSCC, a national body to monitor and facilitate coordination between and among justice sector, agencies, and other stakeholders will be institutionalized, and vehicle for institutionalizing mechanisms to ensure effective and efficient coordination among all justice sector, agencies, and other stakeholders. Effective coordination will facilitate the necessary planning, budgeting, and investment programming systems to effectively address systematic issues and concerns in the justice sector. At the ground level, more justice zones will be established to provide a platform for effective interagency coordination in criminal system. Justice zones are areas or localities where the minimum degree of interagency coordinative reforms are at work. An example is establishing local government or LGUs. This infrastructure will house courts, prosecutors, public attorneys, the police, and a jail with classified housing for surrendered or apprehended drug offenders. The Justice Hub will serve as a one-stop venue for criminal justice and will aim to improve access to judicial processes. Next is threaten economic justice. To strengthen the administration of economic justice, sub strategies to establish and enhance special courts as well as streamlined land disposition rules will be undertaken. Establish and enhance special court. Environmental courts will be strengthened to keep up with the influx of pending environmental cases. An example of it is to streamline judicial activities. Special courts will be selected from the regular jurisdiction courts of the regional trial courts or RTCs. Court official, officials and personnel will be trained to apply the spe special rules adopted by the Supreme Court. Next is deliver justice real-time. Real-time justice will be op operationalized through interagency e 
efforts. The sector-based approach will deliver justice real-time and as needed. Sub-strategies mentioned below will help in the reduction of aging of criminal, civil, administrative, and commercial cases from feeling to judgment. An example of it is the streamlined investigation and prosecutorial processes. The DOJ will streamline criminal investigation, prosecution, and case management processes, including those for heinous crimes and illegal drugs. Another one is the enhance and ex expand night courts. Night courts, which are currently operational in Manila, Quezon City, and Pasay courts, address the need to provide immediate judicial action after office hours. They prioritize the handling of bail applications, lifting of warrant of arrest, urgent application for whole departure order, plea bargain agreements, and voluntary pleas of guilt. Next is to improve sector efficiency and accountability. Deliver fair and equal justice. An impartial and non-discriminatory administration of justice promotes inclusion. To achieve this, several sub-strategies will be undertaken. Increase access to legal aid, especially of the poor and the marginalized sector. Whereas legal age aid is provided, several challenges remain such as gaps in the process and the non-availability of competent counsels. Example, overseas Filipinos or OFIS will be provided with the court hotline for inquiries about the status of their cases. Facilities for remote testimony will also be established through embassies for pending court cases and utilizing automated hearings. Remote filing filing all of small claims will also be allowed among offices. Also, to pursue corrections reform strategies, with the war on drugs and intensified campaign against criminality, the, pen the penology system, from preventive detention to serving of prison sentence, probation, parole, F executive clemency, and final release or discharge, will have to reform in a systematic way. The war on drugs has spawned a different need for corrections and reintegration. For drug users who enter the criminal justice system, documentation and record all will be done through the DILG's National Centralized Database of Drug Offenders, which will be linked to the Criminal Justice Information Exchange. Next. Enhance accountability through an engaged citizenry. Engaging the citizenry will spur trust and enhance public accountability by launching broader information, education, and communication, or IEC. It is the campaign that the public will better understand the justice system. This will lead to a higher degree of citizen engagement which in turn will facilitate sectoral and agency-based accountability. An example of it is the activity that the crafting of communication plan that will effectively convey initiatives and processes to stakeholders, especially the step-by-step -step process of the justice system from feeling of complaint up to the disposition of cases. It will utilize the wide reach of social media platforms and reinforce Barangay Help Desk. Last, enhance sector efficiency. Central to the justice reform initiative is the establishment of a framework of coordination among judicial agencies that recognizes their specific functions and mandates. The framework will converge efforts were needed and will shape the mode of service delivery of the sector. The goal is to depart from the prevailing mindset of institution, focus performance to sector-aware performance and sector-directed targets. 
this will be achieved by identifying areas for rationalization of resources for easier sector budget support. To ensure efficient delivery of service, the following will be addressed. Staffing deficiencies, rationalization of court, positions, selection process, harmonization of human resource standards, and implementation of interagency programs across justice sectors, agencies to achieve multidisciplinary approaches in handling cases. Promoting Philippine Culture and Values by 2022, Filipinos will have greater awareness of our diverse culture and values. There will be significant progress towards inculcating values for the common goods, cultivating creativity, and strengthening culture-sensitive governance and go development. Culture is that complex world of the people's way of life, which includes the knowledge, belief, art, Law, morals, costume, values, ideas, sentiments, and any other capabilities acquired by a person as a member of society. The Philippines is a nation of diverse culture, but this is not adequately documented and existing documentation is not easily accessible. Culture also varies according to age group, gender, spirituality, and socioeconomic class. Even persons with disabilities have their own culture. However, a complete assessment of the country's diverse cultures, covering both the tangible and intangible, remains a challenge because data are sparse, scattered, and not regularly gathered. Strategies the priority areas of cultural and agenda are safeguarding and ensuring our cultural heritage, achieving equity and inclusion in access to cultural resources and services, and sustaining and enhancing cultural assets to foster creativity and innovation for socioeconomic growth. Step 1. To value our diverse cultures. Develop procedure, disseminate, and liberalize access to information on Filipino culture. Institutionalize and intensify heritage conservation plans and program. Establish knowledge development centers and schools of living tradition for building capacities of Filipinos. Expand exclusive cultural structure as civic space for dialogue and cultural exchange. In this step, in order to raise our awareness about country's cultural diversity, Knowledge Development Centers will be established to document, conserve, and protect tangible and intangible cultural heritage for prosperity, as well as enrich the pe people's knowledge and sense of ownership of various elements of Filipino culture. Cultural structure and facilities will use as venue for fostering social cohesion and valuing cultural diversity. Cultural structures such as museum, cultural centers, archives, libraries, art galleries, and other cultural facilities will be made more inclusive in order to allow for dialogue and cultural exchange. Step 2. To inculcate values for common good. Determine a set of core values that foster the common good. Utilize various channels of values and calculation to reach all community members. Increase government efforts for promotion of values that foster the common good. Mainstream cultural education in the basic, technical, vocational, and higher education system. It is instilling value for the common good in the cons consciousness of all citizens will provide the needed positive and transformative exchange that will eventually lead to high trust society. There are values that are common to Filipinos and there are important for social cohesion and inclusive development. Values that are embraced for various Filipinos communities will be identified. Project, activities, and programs that promote these Filipinos values will also created, implemented, integrated, and reviewed across all levels of government. 
Step 3. To advance pagmakahilikain or value of creativity excellence. Boost the, the development of Filipino creativity as tool for social cohesion and impetus for culture-based industry and creative economy. Build public appreciation of Filipino creativity. A culture of creative excellence needs to permit various levels of public consciousness as a foundation of the globally competitive knowledge economy. Step 4. The strengthen culture-sensitive governance and development. Pursue institutional reforms of culture development. Develop culture assets across the country. Establish historic and cultural complexes nationwide as hubs for cultural education, entertainment, and tourism. Strength the protection of the rights and vulnerable sectors of society. To access cultural resources and to live a life free from discrimination and fear. The government has an important role to play in a nation's cultural development. It can provide the needed resources to ensure the preservation and development of the Philippine culture and exploration and understanding of the Philippine history. In addition, local governments can support community initiatives to include culture in their local development plan. Our Synthesis Enhancing the social fabric malasakit is very helpful in our nation to build a strong and productive citizen. In ensuring people-centered, clean, and efficient governance, public perception of the Philippine government will continuously improve as it works to become cleaner, more efficient, effective, and people-centered. Moreover, pursuing fair and swift administration of justice lead us in fair, peace, and secure country where in the country's civil, criminal, commercial, and administrative justice system will be enhanced. Significant reforms will be undertaken to ensure fair and sweep administration of justice. In addition to this, promoting Philippine culture and values whereas Filipinos will have greater awareness of our diverse cultures and values. There will be significant progress towards inculcating values for the common goods, cultivating creativity and strengthening culture-sensitive governance and development. Culture is that complex whole of the people's way of life, which includes the knowledge, belief, art, law, morals, customs, values, ideas, sentiment, and any other capabilities acquired by a person as a member of society. We all know that enhancing the social public malasakit uh, can be the great help for us to uh, have more improvement in our country, Philippines. We move to Activity B. So, Activity B composed of Enhancing Social pub Public Malasakit Issues and Accomplishment. Enhancing the Social Public Malasakit Issue Number 1 title and author get to know ra number 11463 or the malasakit center act of 2019 author philippine information agency review of comments of the articles sometime in 2017 then special assistant to the president now senator go discussed with president duterte the possibility of putting under one roof all government agencies that give various medical and financial assistance to be housed in the select hospitals in the country. Poor and indigent patients or their representative would go to individual's offices scattered in separate locations, often one agency for day seeking those assistance. So for me, this uh, is very great help for us all, to all people, especially to the poor people who can't uh, uh, access to hospitals that uh, high on bills. Accomplishment. Duterte signed Malasakit Bill in Tulo by CNN Philippine staff. The measure establishing the Malasakit Center was signed in Tulo by President Rodrigo Duterte. And I believe it was all for the best. It is for us. 
they can ensure that patients in need of medical assistance will receive it, as well as that they will be treated with compassion, respect, and malasakit. Issue number two. Philippine war on drugs may have killed tens of thousands, says UN, by Rebecca Ratilite. Review comment. I believe the Duterte's drug campaign was aimed at diverting drug users, but it's heartbreaking to see that many innocent people have been slain, despite the fact that some suspects did not actually resist. According to the evidence, some suspects are still being shot to death. And all we know that this does not show care to people, especially to the family of the victim. And it makes people fearful for their loved ones as well as being contrary to swift and fair justice. Tell of the accomplishment. Text 888 for corrupt government execs slow service by Kate Kalayag. It is stated in the article that Filipinos could now express their concern, complaint, corruption, or any slow delivery of government services by just texting 8888. For me, it is an excellent strategy to minimize corrupt, lazy, and incompetent government officials. As we all know, corruption in the Philippines is like a norm in our country. Corruption may not be removed entirely, but we could minimize it. Issue title and author. CSC calls for improved HR management in government by Christine Gudis. The Civil Service Commission, or CSC, called on government agencies to step up their human resource or HR management systems and competencies to improve public service. Human resources is the catalyst to achieve the Filipinos' collective vision of a matatag, maginhawa, at panatag na buhay. The government cannot accomplish its desired outcomes when the civil servants are not fully capable, are disengaged, and lack a service-oriented attitude. CSC Chairperson Alicia De La Rosa Pala said. Review comment on issue. I am glad that the Civil Service Commission is really stepping into the next level of improving HR management system in government. I really hope that proper implementation of such will be materialized. My take on this matter is that may the HR management adhere to the rules and regulations of hiring new civil servants. May they be able to see the potential of qualified and eligible candidates and not solely rely on strong connections and backer system. Because these cases are prevalent in the government service, the chances of the most qualified applicant were set aside. Selection of aspiring civil servants must be a political and should be based on their credentials and must pass by the eligibility criteria. And for those who were already in the civil service and performing well, perhaps an incentive may add motivation to their hard work and maintain their values while working. Accomplishment, title, and author. Modernizing government HR, co-created policies, and personalized services. Public servants share their 2022 reform priorities by Mia Han. As part of the Philippine Development Plan 2017 to 2022, the Civil Service Commission is working on a strategy to develop smart and resilient public organizations and future ready public servants with a focus on providing responsive, people centered, technology enabled, and green governance. One aspect is the Philippine Talent Management Strategy, or PTMS which seeks to strengthen the civil service to address future needs and challenges which may occur at the global, national, and regional level. Review, comment, and accomplishment. 
I have nothing against this accomplishment for as long as its utilization provides positive impact and strengthens good governance, I see no harm. Government constantly seeks changes so as to adapt to modernization and I think this is one step closer to achieving global competencies. Hot Corruption, Shameless, PECC by Catherine S. Valente. Review comments on the article or issues. In this article, you can see how people have conducted their blatant corruption. Some P2 to 3 billion funds are allegedly being released weekly due to their lack of validation mechanism of the agency's IT system. The PACC commissioner, Belgica, ensures that government shelters the top officials committing fraud accordingly. It's deeply frustrating to see how a government official are committing fraud for their personal gain that is supposed to be an allotment for the Filipinos. That's all. Thank you and God bless you. Do you have any question of us? So, let me share my group mates to you. Eliza May as group leader, Jose Bell, researcher and slash reporter. Irish, researcher slash reporter. Earl Dwayne, researcher slash reporter. Janela, researcher slash reporter. Zaire, researcher slash reporter. Mary Ann, researcher slash reporter. Trisha, researcher slash reporter. That's all. Thank you and God bless you.